you about the dry matter concentration that we need to measure. So I'll show you how we do it. It may be a little tiring because we need to run on the microwave many times, but we'll go through the whole process here. We'll finish up and show you how to do it. So then we'll go to the fuse there and we'll run the molasses for you to see and the bailer with the propionic acid sprayer. We'll wrap and we are done, okay? I hope it will be quick and easy. So first thing that I mentioned to you, so you should not, uh, if you use the microwave inside of your house or in any circumstances, uh, you need to put inside of the microwave a little cup with water on the corner, okay? Let me show you here. Can you see the water? Don't do it without the water, okay? You put the water there, what happens is it doesn't let the forge to get on fire and get too hot. Increase the humidity a little bit. So first step, water, okay? Water inside of the microwave. So here, if you wanted to take a look, we have just a container here, plastic one, and we collect from the wind row 100 grams of forage, just to be easy for us to calculate, right? Here, we have 100 grams of forage, right? Then, we're gonna put in the microwave every one minute cycle and let it go. By the time that we wait, and that wait is repeated twice, the forage is dry. Does that make sense? When we are doing one minute, one minute, one minute, so the moisture is going down, so we will always be decreasing moisture. By the time they start repeating the same reading, that means it's dry. So there is no water to go out anymore, so then it will be dry. Okay, 100. <coughs> Okay, so we'll run a few times and we'll check the, the weight until we make sure that when it's running here, you can also use the meter, right? This is easier. The problem of this meter here, it does not measure if the moisture will be above 40%. We talk about 50% moisture this morning, so in that scenario, that doesn't help. And then, for this one, you need to make it really pack it. You have a different probe with a different sensor that you can stick on a bucket and put inside. But also remember, some meters like this one has limitations for the amount of moisture. So if you are measuring 50, trying to get 50%, that may not be a good tool for you. But most of you have seen this, it's somehow not expensive. So it's something that I think if you bail hay or make any hay that you should have because sometimes you don't have the choice to do with microwave. Okay? It was 100, now it's 85, okay? So moisture is going down. So with this one, I'll just measure the moisture of this hay for you to see how easy it is, right? If you stick it in, 12.5. It's a little easier, isn't it? <laughs> but sometimes you need to measure in the wind row, remember. And one question that I get a lot is about the sweating. Have you heard about the sweating when you make hay or haylage? People said the hay is sweating. So that means you measure the moisture and put it up. Then when you go back two or three days, you bail with 12% dry matter, but now with 16, 17. So the moisture actually increased over time. The moisture didn't increase. The problem was the way that you measure the moisture. Some of these meters here will measure the moisture outside the grass. 
When you put in a bale, the moisture that is inside of the stem, after a few days, will go out and go to the surface of the grass. So that, in fact, you have probably a forage that was 16%, right? But your meter fooled you, and then you thought you have a 13%. And if you are in the range that the forage is dry, that is not a problem. But the problem is when you are too high, because some people have heat up and uh, burn the, the whole barn and stuff because they measure it was 15 but in fact it was 23 24 because the meter didn't measure right sixty two going down have you done the microwave procedure before no so if you make a hay or haylage, I think that's something that may help you. And if you go to the University of Florida website, you have a publication about the procedure. So you can also have it there, the publication, and do it at home. I should have a pretest here to ask you, what is the most important thing when you're going to do the microwave? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. If you remember that part, I'm safe because even if you don't get the dry matter, you didn't burn your house. If you get close to the microwave, you start burning grass. You can smell it, so that is getting dry. We are doing one minute cycle now, we're gonna turn to 30 seconds just to, to see how it goes. Forty-seven. We'll do two more, and if it gets around 47, 45, I think that will be the dry matter of the material that you're going to see on the field over there. We also have a video with this procedure on the internet. If you decide to take a look, it's on the Massey Ferguson website. And they have a, a series of uh, educational videos, and it, we show the same thing. Forty-six. If it repeats one more, that will be what we have. Forty-five. I think that's it. So then you repeat like two times, pretty close. So if you keep doing, it may start burning grass. So you keep decreasing the time, but you're gonna see the decreasing weight is really small. So that tells me that the forage that you're gonna see on the field there is about 45% dry matter. We talk about 50%, right? So that's pretty good. If you start baling right now, by the time that you finish at four o'clock, you know. That would be 45, the one at the end may be 55. So on average, you're gonna probably have the ideal dry matter. Uh, what time we cut it this morning, then? We cut it at nine o'clock, probably after the dew was a little done. That's probably the best way. But as I told you about the difference in grass, if you do that with hermatria, that will not happen. That will not be 45 right now. But with the jigs, because they lose moisture really quick, so that, you know, half a day is sufficient. So you can cut and bail in about half a day.